welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. Now, in this session, we're going to look at the work of actinogen. It's developing an innovative treatment for the cognitive problems seen with neurological diseases like Alzheimer's. Um, with me now is its CEO, Steve Gourlay. Steve, welcome. Uh, thanks very much, Vivian. Thank you for having me. Now, we've all become very aware with uh, Aduhelm and Biogen of you know, the big hitters who are going after amyloid, so the, those plaques on the brain, but you're going for a completely different approach. Tell me a bit more about how you see this. Yeah, so our approach is that to really prevent the progression or to essentially look for a cure for Alzheimer's, you have to prevent the formation of amyloid and these other tangles of a protein called tau. And so our drug, which lowers levels of cortisol inside brain cells, is targeted to do just that, to reduce the toxic uh, inflammation caused by excessive cortisol, which has uh, been shown to be related uh, to, the high levels are related to uh, shrinkage of the brain in areas related to Alzheimer's. So the idea there is to prevent the protein from forming in the first place and really halt the progression of Alzheimer's in patients who are still living independent lives and give them many more years, hopefully, of a happy life in that independent home environment. So you're not talking cure. What you're talking is really just making the symptoms uh, much more bearable. Uh, essentially, we don't, of course, we'd love it to be a cure. Uh, if it can halt the progression um, or help to halt the progression in a safe way uh, and give people several years of independent uh, living uh, in that early stage, I think that would be a very medically significant, um, you know, uh, you know, thing for the field and, and patients. Now, your drug candidate, Xanamen, uh, targets cortisol in the brain. Why not target cortisol systemically? Why do you have to just go after it in the brain? Sure, that's a great question. So the drug does target the enzyme, which is inside liver cells and fat cells, as well as inside brain cells. But the way we're developing is, is to develop, is to reduce the levels in the brain cells to the, to, in, to the extent that just that works well in that targeted way inside the brain and avoid lowering cortisol in blood too much because if you do that, you get something called Addison's disease or an Addisonian crisis where you can't stand up and have low blood pressure and your cells cease to function because you need a certain level of cortisol in the blood and in the tissue uh, to, uh, to function normally. But that said, this drug has been, this type of drug has been shown to have a mild positive effect in type 2 diabetes, and it almost certainly will have some beneficial metabolic effects in general, in addition to the effects in the brain. Now, I've mentioned Alzheimer's, but there are plenty of other neurological diseases that are also characterized by high levels of cortisol in the brain. And are you going after those two, and what are they? Uh, yes, we are pursuing a disease uh, called Fragile X syndrome, which is a common form of autism, mainly affecting boys. Uh, that, that phase two study is starting now and we'll read out in 2023. And then recently we announced depression associated with some difficulty thinking or poor cognition is our third indication. And that study will be starting next year, also reading out in 2023. Depression and fragile X are strongly associated with uh, elevated levels of cortisol. And uh, we're excited to see whether intervening with our drug in a safe manner um, can you know, produce clinical benefit in these uh, adolescents with fragile X and adults with depression. Now, what level of data have you collected with the Zanaman uh, so far? At this point, we're very excited to have more than 300 patients or volunteers treated. More than 120 of those have been treated for 12 weeks. So we have an excellent safety database. Uh, so we know the drug is safe. Uh, we know the dose areas. Uh, we're studying five and 10 milligram doses because a direct imaging study of target engagement in the brain showed us that those are the doses we should be pursuing. Uh, and then very interestingly, a couple of years ago, we showed that the drug can improve working memory and attention using a, a computerized test of cognition over a 12 week period. And this was just in healthy older people. So we've shown the drug is active on cognition already. And now we're repeating those results with lower doses and then hopefully moving forward into an expanded Alzheimer's program, as well as the other two diseases we mentioned. Now, we've already mentioned uh, Aduhelm, and, uh, which, of course, 
you know, got its FDA clearance, but didn't get one from EMA and is associated with very high cost. But it has focused everybody's minds on Alzheimer's, which previously, you know, we've seen a slew of drugs just uh, fail horribly. How are you positioned in all of this? I mean, are you sort of creeping under the radar? Do you think that you will get a, a, a greater spotlight following the Aduhelm? I'm going to call it a debacle because I think some people might also call it that. Yes, we. the whole field has benefited from the Aduhelm approval because the FDA said in black and white, we will give you an approval based on a surrogate, in their case, removing amyloid from the brain, uh, and with a very modest hint of efficacy. So it's really lowered the bar for the whole field, meaning we could use, we could, we too could use a surrogate in the future. And we too could expect not to have to have a very dramatically positive safety efficacy benefit ratio. So that has given the whole field, including us, a boost. Um, what we are excited about is that our mechanism is targeted at preventing that sort of uh, protein formation in the first place. And so in other words, it's much closer to potentially the root cause of Alzheimer's, which of course is still a little opaque. We don't really understand fully the biology of aging and Alzheimer's disease. However, there's a strong suspicion that cortisol is a key part of that story. And we now have the drug that gets into the brain in adequate concentrations and safely can be used to explore all of this hypothesis. So we're in a great position to exploit the new enthusiasm for mod modern treatments. And of course, our treatment isn't an injection like Adjuhelm, it's a once a day capsule at this time. So it's very easy to take orally. And presumably at a rather lower cost than, or not that you've got to cost, but you know, you're know you aiming to get at a cost which is not $56,000 a year. Uh, yes, I mean, yes, we're a long way from pricing, a, a, you know, a, a drug, but uh, we look forward to that. But, um, you know, the, the cost of production for a small molecule oral therapy is obviously much less than a biologic. And, and uh, this drug also has excellent properties in terms of its ability to be combined with other molecules and antibodies, as well as other small molecules. So this may well, you know, future be used as a combination if a combination approach is actually the, the true answer for a cure of Alzheimer's. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, what can we expect from you in terms of news over the next 12 months that investors uh, might want to uh, look at in particular? Yeah, so 2022 is an exciting year for us with the commencement of Fragile X and depression. So there'll be some ongoing trial startup uh, news as we uh, get the operations of those trials and the recruitment going. Uh, but it, the, really the main event is the, uh, the readout of our dose range in cognition data in healthy older volunteers. We've finished enrolling that study, which we announced recently, and we'll have the answers uh, from that trial in the second quarter of this year, um, so in a few months' time. And then the retrospective analysis uh, of a phase two study that was previously done with a 10 milligram dose, we're actually going to be able to go and take the new biomarkers that have only been available for measurement in blood in the last couple of years. We're gonna go back and retrospectively look at that study and understand whether our 10 milligram dose, which is our target proof of concept dose, can actually alter the underlying uh, things like levels of amyloid protein or inflammation proteins in the blood. So that biomarker sort of disease modifying data set will be available in the second half of the year. So we've got two big readouts in Alzheimer's disease. And then the readouts for the other indications, Fragile X and depression, will be a year later in 2023. And what are you thinking of in, in terms of a, 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 a more distant horizon? Adding other indications? Uh, so at this stage, we're very focused on doing excellent clinical development, uh, excellent endpoint choice and measurement uh, in the three indications. Uh, we do have a, a collaboration with Oxford University in the UK where we're measuring the beneficial metabolic effects of the drug in the body outside the brain, uh, relevant to the question you asked earlier. So we do have a collabor collaboration there. Uh, however, we are working with other academics and we may do some other investigator sponsored trials, but we're going to focus on these three for now. And uh, if things go well with the Alzheimer's program this year, we would obviously look to expand into a much larger uh, phase 2B style uh, Alzheimer's trial. And they, those typically have many hundreds of patients in them and uh, typically, you know, nine to 12 months long. So those kind of trials uh, would be the next big step for the Alzheimer's program. 
Well, let's hope that we're now moving into a golden era for neurological diseases, which have so long uh, languished uh, behind and not really have the therapies. Uh, wish you every success with those trials. Thank you so much Thank for you. talking to us. Thank you so much.